You are about to listen to the Never Daily Podcast. This is the biggest thing since the Zaproda film. So many questions. I don't have any answers. But please, please don't stop listening to the Never Daily Podcast. Welcome to the Never Daily Podcast, a podcast that touches your heart and your children. Today's episode is brought to you by Pathmark. Come to Pathmark 24 hours a day for savings all over that add up to savings overall. Yeah. We are off to the races. Not sure what race this is. Very white race so far. What's a race you would never... What's a race you're against? Oh, probably the Indy 500. Yeah. I was going to say the, f- I don't like any of it. Honestly, I, I never really cared for racing. Formula one's uh, hard to just, watch. It's all hard to watch. Now my, my grandparents love NASCAR. Um, there was a huge rift in my grandparents marriage in the early two thousands. Uh, or I guess the late nineties when Jeff, Jeff Gordon and Del Earnhardt were alive at the same time. Yep. And my grandfather, a huge Dale Earnhardt fan. My grandmother, a huge Jeff Gordon fan because she thought he was cute. And God, it really, I mean, it was a wedge in their relationship. It It's almost like the the culture, the race culture creates those, those that enmity between at, performers, athletes, you know, uh, Oh, and the Georgians. And the Georgians. Yeah, definitely. So if you had to pick a race of people, yeah. the Georgians are where you would where you would say you have the most critical. Yes. Yeah. The the country, not the state. Um <clears throat> there are we have we have some interesting cultures in my area. Um and and it's interesting to I I think I think it's very it helps contribute to see here's here's where I may differ from a lot of people I really think that coming being in America and bring being in a town and and preserving your culture helps lift every other culture up but with one with one caveat you don't do you don't do your community a service if you're just a silo. So I think I think if you if you go to a country to live and to you know take advantage of whatever amenities that country or that area has has I think you should look at assimilating. And I know a lot of people like I you know we always think of like the evil evil guy on, you know, with the lair on a cliff when you hear assimilation. But I think assimilation's important to a certain degree. Like, uh, you know, being involved in community, in the community, you know, if, if your kids go to that, go to a certain school, being, being a, a voice there rather than just siloing yourself off, you know, I think that's, yeah, I think that's really valuable. I thought assimilation meant like moving to a new place and yeah, well, I guess what I thought assimilation meant is kind of what you were talking about. I guess I thought it was more taking on that cult, embracing the culture or the lifestyle of the people that you're now around. Uh, I, you know what I think it would be is this, is if you look up, if if you, you can go, there are practice tests. If you go and, 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 Grab a practice test for U.S. citizenship. One, I think if you asked most of the kids these days, they couldn't pass the test. I don't know if a lot of adults could pass the test to be. Yeah, Jess is saying she couldn't. And that's that's a truth. That's not like, a, you know, I'm not finger wagging anybody. It It's heavy duty. The things that they have to know, the things that they have to understand about the United States, its history, its laws, what we do, what we don't do, what's, you know, it, it's based on a, I guess you could say a moral baseline, uh, but but they have to understand, if in order to get citizenship here, they have to understand those things implicitly. That would be what I say is, is assimilation, is 
understanding what has developed that nation into a, a baseline culture. What is the baseline culture of being an American? Doesn't mean that you have to discard your belief system or anything like that. Uh, yeah. But assimilation Means is you got to eat at Chatters once a month. Th- that that's a couple tiers up from baseline, I would say. Okay, that's like super. That's tier thirteen American. Yeah, I mean we're really talking about or Cracker Barrel. Whoa, whoa, that's a high bar. Going to yard sales. Okay, there you could put that on there. Having two grills, one that's on the porch that you do use, and one that's out there by the shed that hasn't been used in years. Or. I, I I suffer from this. I have two grills. I have a barbecue and a Traeger. And the Traeger is like my gym membership. I keep it around and I support it and I maintain it and I pay for it. You know, keep it nice because I know I should be using it, <laughs> but I don't use yep. it. Mm. I've got a smoker that I'm like that with. And I think a Traeger is a smoker, yeah, it's a isn't smoker. it? Yeah, exactly. Oh, uh, it's, mine's not a Traeger, but. I bought that one of those big expensive grills that has a smoker combo yeah. thing. Never used the smoker. I remember never used the smoker. I remember uh, back in the day a series of Marco Polo videos from you as you assembled it, as you put it together. I remember this. Yeah, well, it turns out every time you use it, you got to fucking clean the pellets out. Yeah, and if it rains, they get moist and then they expand like great stuff foam. And then you try to turn the motor on and it blows the motor out. I've had to replace the motor in the smoker twice yeah. and I've used it twice. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Smokers are just, so you just got to order a big old pallet of, of smoker motors. <laughs> Keep them somewhere out there, preferably by your extra grill that's rusted out at the bottom. How American are you? How many weed eaters do you have? Two. Two. You're semi-American. One I don't ever use. It's a backup. Yeah. yeah, and it would talk, take you 30 minutes just to get it started. Uh, Mar- Marco Art Nerd, uh, that's that's what Marco named themselves in the back door. I just asked gas or battery. Good question. So I, I come that's from- Mark Williams. I come from acreage, and, and there are certain things, if you own acreage, when you need a weed eater- you you cannot go with battery. You won't you won't survive. And also, really interesting thing about weed eaters when it comes to really using them. Look around when you're driving around. And you see landscapers doing stuff. One thing you'll never see a landscaper using is one of those weed eaters with the curved pole. They never use the curved pole because they there it's extra wear and tear on that on that drive drive line going through. It's always a straight pole, straight pole, gas only. Um, I'd say, uh, you know, there, there's, there's a lot of, there's a lot of conversation out there on how many strokes your, your engine should have, yeah. you know, I, I have my preference, but you know. Also, he asked battery or gas. There's really only one answer to that. And this is somebody I've got a battery powered steel weed eater that might as well. I just throw it in the garbage. Yeah. Um, unless you're weed eating dandelions one at a time, you might as well throw that weed eater away. Cause I remember being so proud when I bought that steel, I was making jokes about it's so quiet. I could, I could weed eat behind enemy lines. (laughs) Um, very proud of it. Yeah. I could have been a sniper weed eater, crawl, <laughs> low crawled into a neighbor's backyard at three in the morning, weed eated their entire backyard, crawled back, and nobody would have ever woken up. But it turns out that with that comes a price, and that price is that it has the energy of a twenty dollar beard trimmer. <laughs> yeah. I will say I've been very uh so I've got I don't know, at one point I was kind of on a and I'm going to get judgment for this, but I, I bought a couple of the 20 volt craftsman tools uh, pa- and, you know, powered tools. Oh, exciting. Let us know when you open them. I, I use them all. That's the thing I do. And when I was definitely on the property, like I have a, I have a 20 volt craftsman, uh, 
chainsaw, which I was blown away by how much use I can get out of a battery. So I think things are getting better. Like my lawnmower is electric. And back in the day, you'd be lucky. You could like mow your front and then you got to charge the thing. Now I I can. That's wild because for the longest time, I thought that you was the gayest thing about you. <laughs> no, I think if you looked that at it's your lawnmower, it, if you looked at my whole lineup of law of, of lawn and maintenance accessories that are all battery powered, you would, you would think that definitely I, I'm the, I'm the Ibiza of battery powered power tools. I'm the Ibiza. Yeah, I have. Th- there are benefit. I mean, the maintenance benefits alone make it. If you're just living like a duplex yeah. or something, and you got a little bitty, I mean, they're they're at they're fi- they're fine. Yeah, but if you've got to start weed eating or or mowing like a fence row, yeah, or like anything above Kentucky bluegrass, like a. Fucking forget about it. You're not going to be able to do it. No, uh, my uh, my 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 battery powered stuff is all light and powerful. I'm I'm actually pretty impressed with the stuff. Like I've, I oh oh I've got one. It cha- it changed my life for a while because I had a bunch of trees. It's a chainsaw, but the the but the chainsaw is a jaw. So the bottom jaw is just yeah. You know, it forces whatever you put in the middle into the chainsaw. And it's, you know, it's the size of like a, a bullpup uh, AR, you know, style, you know, it's small. Yeah, I've seen those. Yeah. And it man, they work. I convinced I, my, my in-laws came over and they live on a farm and, and they loved it so much. They lo- I loaned it to them for a while and then I ended up just buying one for them for Christmas. But you're right on uh, when, if you got a fence line or something like that, my, my, my gas powered weed eater is the kind that has the loop where you can hook it to like, you know, your belt or whatever, because you've got, you're holding that thing so long. It's, yeah. yeah. It's like, you can, you can hook this to your suspenders, your, your, your landscaping suspenders. So yeah, definitely. How do we get off on that? Do you get off on that? I don't know. I don't know. I uh, recorded with dead bug this morning. Oh, how'd that go? The fellas doing well. He's doing good. He's uh, making big moves. He's got big things in the horizon. I don't think I can talk about him yet, but um, that's all I can say. I think as of now, but he's he's getting ready to get into something big. Yeah, that's exciting. He's, so I'm happy for him. He's a good. He's he's good at that. He always. It was always interesting to talk to him because he was always working on something. He's 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 different than most podcasters out there because he has a extremely legitimate professional life, you know. And so, yes, his talking to him it's always interesting because when he's not being dead bug, he's being a legit director <laughs> of TV stuff. So he's always, you know, he's always into something. <clears throat> well, I, uh, fun. I I think I can say this. I'm not going to say much else, but he passed up um, the opportunity to go spend two weeks uh, hanging out with and doing some other things for Violent J from ICP and uh, the lead singer of the Smashing Pumpkins. I don't remember the guy's name. Billy Corgan. Yeah. Wow. That's um, because his other they things were going to were... pay for his. He's doing, that's all I'm going to say, but, yeah. uh, that's big. yeah, he's, he's got some stuff going on. I'm very happy for him. He deserves it. Well, good. Yeah. He did a ICP music video a while back. I think a couple of years ago. Uh, if I sound grouchy, I'm sorry because I, uh, was writing TCK until three 30 this morning and then I got up at six to record with dead bug. So I've slept two and a half hours and I haven't had any coffee. Wait a second. This, so there's more than one thing wrong here because you didn't get good sleep. Uh, but there's mornings where it has, it, this. it's not that bad 
And you're not only drinking coffee, but you're also drinking, I don't know, some form of liquor, hard liquor. So what? Yeah, I haven't had any liquor either. What's the difference? Like, why are we abstaining or are you just like your arms? I literally got up for a few minutes from this chair in the recording booth before coming back on with you guys. Yeah. So it's literally been because I've been in this recording booth since six this morning. Well, um, I could text your wife and see if she could bring you down a Schlitz malt liquor, maybe Schlitz malt liquor or a, she would tell you to fuck off because she's not in a good mood either. Purple passion. That's why I came back down to the recording studio. I was going to cancel you guys. And then I spent five minutes with her. I was like, never mind. I'll go back down and sit in the studio. Pepsi Nitro. Just trying to think of the options that might be available. Did you say Epstein Nitro? Pepsi Nitro. Have you had one yet? Pepsi Nitro. I thought that was a special package on Epstein Island you could get where they would give the underage girl crack before they sent her in to you. <laughs> oh, that's fun. That's fun. Do you have a wit? Do you have a window in your basement? Um, they're covered up. Oh, I was going to say, I could door dash you and direct them to the window <laughs> a Starbucks. That's what I did. I went up long enough to eat a hot dog and then I came back down. So I've already ate. <laughs> I was going to door dash oh. you some Starbucks. You see, well, I plan on going back to sleep after we get done here. <laughs> so, okay. you know what? Well, let's get into it. Let's get into it. Um, And you know what? Let's shift it up. I know it's not Friday and we usually leave this, this sweet, sweet creep for the end. But how about I start? I'll start. Yeah, you fucking do whatever you want to do. And then. Uh, yeah. And then you can do your thing because you, it's topically, I feel like you topically come up, bring up the rear uh, oh. a lot better. Okay. All right. So let's talk about planes. Oh, yeah. I love this. Okay. So back in the like day. Like the Wright Brothers? What? Like the Wright Brothers? No, well, not that far back. We won't go that far back. The 1950s and 60s. So this is a dilemma. And, and I thought I would let everybody kind of know why it's been this way. Like, this is something I don't know that a lot of people have thought about. Okay, let me give you a scenario. Have you ever been on a plane and you're about to take off and the pilot says something like, Thank you for being patient during the delay. Um, we, uh, we're getting off a little later than we want, but uh, we're going to try to make that up in the air. Have you ever heard that one? Yes. So basically what the pilot just told you is this plane goes a lot faster than, than we normally go. And then in your head, you're like, yeah, why don't we just go that speed all the time? Why don't we? So that's what I thought I'd bring today. That's I'm like, guess what? There's some crazy stuff behind it. And so I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to elucidate. Here we go. 1950s and 60s. These guys were like, let's put jet engines on planes and boom, flying got faster because before that it was all props. It was all propeller planes. Right. So it's like they went from dial up to broadband, like overnight with this, the massive investment was made into, um, jet engines the big stars were the boeing 707 and the douglas dc-8 they were kind of the iphones of planes so everybody was tweaking things wings were getting tweaked engines every the works everything about a plane pilots <laughs> that's a more today thing than back then but everything was like what year was this the, the 1950s and 60s 60s, the pilots, you can't tell me the pilots weren't getting tweaked out of their fucking gourds. They probably were. I mean, could you imagine a, a, an experience of doing LSD and then being in the clouds? Butterfly in the sky. I can fly twice as high. Oh, man. Holy shit, I'm flying a plane. <laughs> oh, and I'm not even a pilot. And, like, back in that day, like, the, the pilot's door could just be opened by anybody. Hey, everything going in here? You know? You could have sex with the flight walker. What it's to fl uh, support white support staff. Yeah. No, that's right. Flight walker. 
light walker. I think that's what they call him. Anyway, well, all of these changes. Stewart is sound like a Native American occupation. <laughs> in the 50s and 60s, we found flight walkers were very advantageous for pilots to keep them feeling confident in their flight skills. All planes fly due east. Like the eagle. <laughs> so speaking of eagles, though, that's one of the reasons that there was all this innovation during the time, because they were trying to make flying smoother and less of a gas guzzler. Yeah. So then there's the late 60s, and this is the era that they really start dreaming big. And so they made the Concorde. Do you remember the Concorde? Ah, do I remember the Concorde? No, tell me about it. All right. So the Concorde, you might have seen it. It's a white plane, and it's really yeah, I, long. I know what it looks like. Okay. A uh, crazy thing about it is... The shape of it, the whole point of the Concorde is to go supersonic. So right. it goes faster than the speed of sound. And then it can also go from like New York to London in like two hours or something like that. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. The shape of the plane is very unique because it needs, it's Wild very stuff. <laughs> It's very long, but it also needs to be aerodynamic to be able to get over the speed, the speed of sound. Mm -hmm. So the nose is very long. It's so long that when the plane looks like what? looks like Kathy Griffin with a jetpack. Yeah, yeah. Her, the nose actually detaches and tilts downward so the pilots can see the runway. That's how long it is. Mm -hmm. So anyway, you got the Concorde, which is kind of the American flag version of super fast Mach two. They call it so. These wow. things could go Mach 2. Uh, you also have the Tupolev Tu-144, which is the Russian competitor, right? Both of them are supersonic. Honestly, though, <clears throat> they're like high-end sport cars. They're not for everyday use. So these were these were luxury planes where millionaires, you know, people, business people, people that had to get from A to B really fast. They were they were scheduling these, but like basic seats on them cost thousand dollars or more e even back then so the 1970s comes around and people start keeping it real after the speed craze the aviation folks decided they were like let's focus on saving gas cutting some costs and how about not crashing because they had had some really bad things start to happen with some of these supersonic planes because literally it's like a top gun plane full of just passengers it's crazy so the boeing 747 became the poster child and this is one we all probably know the name of like if you if somebody said name a boeing plane everybody would say 747 so that's yeah, the home alone plane yeah, exactly. So this plane's more about packing people in and going the distance without burning a hole in everybody's pocket. So so here's here's where things really get interesting. Like a prostitute. Uh, packing people in and going the distance without burning a hole in the pocket. Yeah, it really is. It really is. Prostitute of the sky. A lot of people say that. Yeah. About the 747. I didn't really said that about it, but. Yeah, it's a saying. You can spend more time at airports. I should. All right. So here's here's where I start answering the question. Why haven't we gone faster? So mm -hmm. breaking the sound barrier is cool and all, but it's loud, like really loud. It's not just a little pop. It's a full sonic boom that's not so great for people on the ground. So the authorities were like, let's not do that over cities and stuff. And so I don't know if you know it, but right. in order to break the sound barrier, <clears throat> the the whole, the whole it, it's weird when you think about it. So you, all you have to do to know how fast you have to go to break the sound barrier is to know how fast sound travels. And so if we go to chat GPT and we say, how fast oh, does please. sound travel? It will tell us the speed of sound varies depending on the medium through which it's traveling. In general, sound travels faster in solids, believe it or not, 
than in liquids and slowest in gases. However, the most commonly referenced speed of sound is in the air because we're not trying to, you know, go through the speed of sound through aluminum. So, um, so in dry air at 20 degrees Celsius, which is, they're basically just creating a baseline. The speed of sound is approximately 343 meters per second or 1,125 feet per second. Uh, in miles per hour, freaking GPT, who, who does anything in feet per second? That's like, oh, I got to go see grandma. I got to travel 6,712 feet per second to get there. Gosh. Now I'm waiting for it to analyze my aunt, my question of how long, fast right. it's like 600 miles per hour. I'm just going to say, mm-hmm. Let's see, 68 degrees Fahrenheit is approximately 767.27 miles per hour. So it's it, it's mid-700s to, to break the sound barrier, okay? So if you go faster than that, which all these planes can, they can all do it. But if you go faster than that, you hear a sonic boom, which is the same thing on a bigger scale that you hear when you hear a whip crack That crack sound that you're hearing is actually the whip exceeding the speed of sound. And and that's why you hear the crack. That's also why you hear the crack of lightning, because it's separating the air and the air is coming back together beyond the speed of sound and it creates the thunder. So anyway... Going super fast in the air eats up fuel like crazy. It's like driving a truck uphill with a heavy load, and the heavy load in this case being people, thirsty work for an airplane. So for airlines, especially on long trips, it's like choosing between a gas bill and a mortgage. Like we could we could take people super, super fast, but but so what they've done is they've created an appreciable an appreciable baseline that says, yeah, we'll get you there. You know, it takes X number of hours. So most planes use wings that are swept back a bit. Think like the classic cool, not too flashy. They're great for cruising without guzzling too much gas. Now, supersonic jets need wings that look like they're from a sci-fi movie. And they're good for going fast, but not so much for just hanging around in the sky. Also could be really turbulent. It's much more of a bumpy ride if you're in a supersonic. When you go faster... The air pushes back harder, and it's like running into a wall of invisible jello. So near the sound barrier, this gets super intense, and the plane's like, I'm going to need more fuel, buddy. And then that's when the pilot is has to make the decision. So here's, here's the deal. Planes haven't gone faster since the 60s because it's a mix of science stuff cash concerns and keeping the planet happy. So we're all, we all like the idea of zipping around like in a sci-fi movie, but for now we're keeping it in steady 560, six, mid 600s. That's as fast as you're going to see a commercial airliner go, even though they could crush it. They could totally crush that speed. Fun fact to know, Chair, did you know that if you get in an airplane that has two big giant jets on the wing, you know, one on each side, if one of those blew out, the jet on the other side is still strong enough to fly that plane supersonic. Like that's how powerful those I didn't jets know are. That. So did you know what? That you are talking about airports and planes and engines and speed and motors and supersonic and Passing the speed of vision, and I don't care. Just want a place to put my feet. (laughs) Isn't it true? It's become so unpleasant for everyone. When will we have the science? I'm excited when we have the technology to to have a place to put our feet on the plane. I, I tell you what I think is interesting about that is they seem to keep trying to reduce the amount of freedom and space we have whilst sitting in the plane. What I don't think they understand is that the majority of us would love to see a sea change where they're like, you know what? Screw sitting down. Everybody's reclining. 
Like think about yeah. the think about what they could do with take, an airplane. That would be awesome. I know, right? So if they just stopped it with the whole sitting upright thing and reclined us all. They could stack us. They could feather us into the plane. Now, I know a lot of you are probably thinking right now. I'm telling the, you, Auschwitz got something right. Well, and I was going to go back to a slavery. Bad rap. Hold on. It gets a bad rap. Yeah, it does. But they could really get people into a train. They were uh, well, not just the trains, the bunk. I mean, they were Bunks. efficient with space. They were uh, slave ships. Also, if you go, if you Google image slave ship uh, layout yeah. or blueprint, you'll yeah. see that they basically they're like, well, we could get four hundred slaves in this ship by laying them down in the bottom of the ship. Maybe that still had more foot room. That could be why they don't do it. Is because they think as soon as they sh they show the layout for a plane where everybody's laying down, it, it, it looks drums historically up. familiar. Yeah, it starts. You know, it starts looking like a Roots movie. Uh that could be yeah. part of it. But I think much more efficient. You know, and less miserable. Also, probably more USB hookups than a slave ship. No, think about it. Also, if you're vertical uh, or horizontal, I'm sorry, you can't jump before the plane hits the ground if it's crashing. Right. Right. Here's here's another fun fact. You might know this one. Do you know the do you know the science? And this this is correlating. So don't worry. I'm not just meandering off. Do you know the science behind a steel steel toed boot? Like why it's constructed the way it's this. constructed. To stop you from smashing your toes. It's true. Stop you from smashing your toes. If you look at the way the steel cup is constructed, though, under intense load, the boot has a, is built so that that cup buckles backward into your foot. The mm. reason for yeah. this is they determined that a steel toe that crushes downward and just smashes everything, you lost all your toes. But if the steel toe under load tilts backward and cuts all of your toes off, they can all be reattached. Yeah. Yeah. Great, huh? Well, that's comforting. So long so the same. So if you wear steel toe, steel toe boots to work every day. Yeah. Along, just think about that the next time you lace those bitches up. Well, the next time you get on an airplane, don't think about the fact that they've constructed the seats on the plane to ensure that everybody dies if that plane crashes. There is no safety measure. Go. This is a bit of a foil-headed moment, but go and look up conspiracy theories on why they have you do that forward, get your head between your knees position. Yeah, so you can kiss your ass goodbye. It's the it's the fastest way to kill somebody, is what it is. You're you're much less likely to survive the crash. I mean, not that anybody's hey, gonna... realistically, right? <clears throat> you're on a plane and your how how far are you how far are you up whenever you're gliding the altitude? What is it? If you're a hundred thousand. You're two hundred ninety feet. Yeah, that's very low, frighteningly low. And the and you get the and it's like this is your uh, pilot speaking. Turns out we're gonna crash this bitch. <laughs> <laughs> uh, looks like we'll be entering a free fall in the next 13 seconds. Uh, that being said, beautiful weather out. <laughs> looks like we're not going to be making it to New York City this evening. Uh, new landing will be in a field outside Jersey. <laughs> uh, thank you for flying Spirit Airlines. <laughs> yeah. At this time, begin praying. <laughs> so you get that over the intercom, right? And you, and I don't know, how long does it take a plane to fall out of the sky? 15, 16 minutes? If there's propulsion, I mean, like, you know, if it were just a dead, a dead spin, maybe one and a half minutes, you probably got, 
It's going to. What would you do in that one and a half minutes? I know what I'd do. I'd start using everybody else's foot space. <laughs> You'd dominate the armrest finally. You'd be that guy. Yes. I would just put my feet everywhere. <laughs> wherever I wanted to. Out in the aisle. I would I would probably I'd get I'd get probably pretty serene. I think I'd get serene because my first imp, my first impulse would be to comfort people around me, but there's no comforting. You're not going to bring anybody around no. in. What are you going to say? It's going to be okay. Yeah. What am I going to What am I going to say? Don't worry. The plane's going to reach a terminal velocity of 120 miles an hour as it descends in a fiery ball toward the Earth, and then it's going to be and over. Then we're going to suddenly stop. Yeah, we're going to be fine. Not super, not fine, but fine really quickly it's over Just, we are all all you can say and if they're like we're gonna die all you can do, go is yep yep that's all you can there's nothing you can do there's a there's a, a nasa and boeing uh co-funded some crash tests of planes to find out which plane seats are the most safe in the event that it's a plane the rear, is, isn't it yeah, it's actually over the wings. Um, yeah. First class, everybody's dead. I mean, that whole that Good. whole front just Good. peels That's off. That's what I say. <laughs> Good. Hope you fucking like that minute and a half fall up there with 10 square foot of fucking foot room. <laughs> I will say one thing about first class is I think it gets a bad rap because the air, what, what a lot of coach business class and coach flyers don't know is the more you fly the more opportunities they give you to just upgrade to first class like without paying you can you can use your miles your your minutes or whatever they give you coins for first class so there is a number of i don't first give a shit why you're in first class i just know how you look at me when i'm walking past you yeah. to get to the cattle part of the plane where we get in a shoot and have somebody stamp our fucking forehead yeah that's why i love southwest because it's a free-for-all it's like I, I was i think i've mentioned this but i was on a southwest flight one time from dallas and i always try to crop dust first class because i'm walking <laughs> through it <laughs> the play the plane I was on wasn't that full and no one was sitting next to me and this the the flight walker comes by and she says she says you can lay down if you want and I was like well it doesn't really recline she's like no no just lay down across all the seats <laughs> so I'm like literally laying down across all the seats like ah it was nice I actually got that experience in coach Whenever we were going to, uh, was it in Florida? Where were we going? Colorado. Colorado. I got a flight that morning to Colorado and on this Boeing 747 or whatever it was. I don't want to offend you. <laughs> um, there were three people. So wow. I got like the entire back of the plane to myself. It was the best flight I've ever had in my life. And basically they said, there's like, yeah. Because the armrest actually, that's another thing. Can't wait till we have the technology to have armrests that raise up on the outside of the, because for whatever reason, the armrests by the windows and the armrests by the, uh, the, uh, in the, uh, in the aisle. I'm so smoked right now. The aisle, those armrests don't go up. They're welded shut. Well, actually, Fun fact, on a lot of them, there's a little tiny hidden button. You got to find it, but it's a little metal tab. If you find it, you can raise the armrest. Not a lot of people know about it. Another one that I love doing, I love doing this one. You got on. You get on one of the newer planes that have been retrofitted with some of the newer things. Like if it's got USB ports on it, it's likely to have this. A lot of people don't know, but the little headrest behind your head clicks upward click 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 so what i like to do is i wait till the plane's in the air and everybody's just kind of in that that zombie state and then i go click 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 and i just click it up just so that i can hear all the people behind me who never knew it did it 
realize that their headrest can do that. So every time you go click a click, you'll hear within 30 seconds, you'll hear 10 people go click a click. <laughs> Stupid human tricks. It's pretty fun. Oh, man. Well, that's all I had. I, I, I like to do a trick. When I, it's like that, where when we get up to flying altitude, I scream to get a react to hit, get a reaction. And it always works every time is if you scream, you've got a bomb. <laughs> Not just everybody behind you will also react, but everybody in front of you. <laughs> and then a guy comes out and it turns out he's an employee um, in regular clothes. And he says, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a marshal, a yeah. U.S. marshal. Yeah. Well, those plane clothes, they're all, they're on a lot of flights. You don't know, you don't know it, but they're there. They're there. You ever, ever been on a flight where there is a prisoner that they're transporting? I, no, I don't think I have. so. I've been on a flight. I wasn't sure. I didn't ask, but I've been on a flight with a guy that was in handcuffs. Now it, it could have been one of two things. It could have either been an extradition to like another state or something, or it could have been a, a, a have you ever been on one of those f flights where it's a layover, but you stay on the plane because you don't need to get off on that happens every once in a while. So I'm not quite sure, yeah. but there was a dude sitting next to a dude and that dude had handcuffs on. And I thought to myself, I thought, you know, that's not too much worse than everybody else on the plane. It's not that much more uncomfortable yeah, than what everybody else is dealing with. No need in putting foot cuffs on him. Yeah. <laughs> We're all wearing them. It's true. It's true. All right. That's all I got. Let me tell you something else. Okay. Well, you can tell me something else. Go ahead. Well, when you're built like me, I don't need... They say, you know, you got to buy two seats if you're big. But the thing is, I don't need the second seat. I don't need the sitting portion of the seat. Yeah. I've got enough ass space. I just need to buy a second backrest. <laughs> I need. So if I could get a discount where I could tell the person, like, I don't need the seat. If I could just buy a second, I need two seats, but I just need, I need one and a half seats. Yeah. Yeah. I need one seat and two backrests. It's like they make the foot box area so painfully small that, that you think that's the thing that everybody's complaining about. But nobody's thinking about the fact that the, the width of the seat is, is like you couldn't get three Paris Hiltons inside of the width of the back of the seat. Everybody's shoulders. Everybody's doing a weird lean thing. To make, to make it work. Yeah. I am so leaning into the, 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 I, I have like permanent nerve damage in my funny bone nerve from, from that stupid food cart hitting my, my elbow all the time. Cause I'm constantly leaning in, in the, yeah. in the thing. <clears throat> my elbows come in contact with more pubic bones than I am interested in yep. counting. So I always choose an aisle seat. That you, to, for, to, so you can make contact with the pubic bones. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't prefer it, but it does happen. So you have to be prepared. You just have to be prepared. You know what I really hate about airplanes? What? <laughs> There's no space for your feet. I feel like we already covered this. All humans have feet. Why didn't we think about that when we were designing airplanes? If there's like there's black people and white people and gay people and straight people and Mexican people and trans people and Buddhists and Mormons and Christians and atheists. And you know what all those people have in common? They all have feet. They do. You're... They have a non-kosher and a kosher option on the food menu. But none of us know where to put our feet. It's true. It, you know, they just don't care. 
They don't care. You really do feel like cattle when you're going back to coach. Like sometimes I like to moo. Yeah. When I'm going back there, it's like, get in, get back here, you fat, slobby bastards. I'm often. Find a place. Oh, your seatbelt's broken. Fuck it. You're in coach. You don't matter. I am often um, surprised at the movie selections that they have on because yeah. sometimes yeah. I'll look up and I'll see what somebody else is watching. I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't. Everyone is watching that movie with you. What what you're watching on the screen? Yeah, it's usually holes with Shia LaBeouf <laughs> are the born ultimatum. <laughs> Things have gotten better. They've got like internet on the plane and stuff now if you want it. I used to prefer plane flight because it was my time to completely be off the grid. Like there was no option. Nobody could reach out to you. Nothing. But now it's not that easy. Right. So. Well, uh, what'd you bring? I brought something fun today. Okay. And whenever I introduce you to this from the beginning, it's going to sound like an ad. Okay. But I want to front load this that I do not know the people that do this, nor am I being paid to do this. I would love to. I would love to do a collab. I would love to collaborate with these people. But the man behind what I'm bringing today is named Sam Hyde. And many people probably know Sam Hyde. He's a comedian, YouTube, uh, famous kind of for bringing down really iDubs. Um, iDubs tried to do a documentary on him. It was like a hit piece. And then Sam Hyde just completely flipped it on him. And it was really the first L that iDubs ever took was trying to do this documentary on Sam Hyde. But um, P -P -P Sam Hyde, two years ago, started a, a show called Fish Tank Live. And I came across this the other night, and I've been obsessed with it ever since. Um, I've never seen anything like this. It is completely original. And I will show you... Uh, first, I'll give you a breakdown. It's ba it's basically a reality... It's picture... Remember the TV show Big Brother? Yeah. Well, I don't. Okay. Um, I never saw it. Okay. But I know that it was, correct me if I'm wrong, a reality show just putting a bunch of people in a house and seeing what happens, right? Yeah. So picture that and then imagine that you as the viewer can access any room at any time. And not only can you access that room, but you can also verbally communicate with the contestants. Oh, so it's sort of a cranky anchors. And you, it's not correct. Well, the, here, I'll pull it up. I've got it pulled up right now. And you can describe what you're seeing. So. Right now, they're in between missions. They're, they can't leave the house. They've been here now a total of uh, 36, yeah, day 36. Oh, this is live. Um, you have the, Ignore this, this over here. This is 100% live. Trish is um, But ignore the uh, comment section over here. You're going to see a lot of racist and homophobic stuff. Uh, but these are two of the contestants. This is Shinji and Taylee. They're two of the contestants. Um, this house was beautiful when they started living in it 36 days ago. Describe how it looks right now. Just this room. Yeah, it looks like... It looks like Joan... Cracked in. It looks like Joan Jett and Willy Wonka had a baby and then taped that baby to a baseball bat and then beat every piece of furniture with that colorful baby. Exactly. It's like, but a, there's trash yeah. and shit all over the floor. The furniture's broken. So this is bedroom three, as you can see here. And down here, we have a map of the whole house. You see this? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And the green can you spot. you see my cursor? Yeah. And you can see the green spot. Like, that's the room you're looking at, right? So, oh, can you click around? Yep. Yeah, anywhere you want to go. Whoa. And this is 100% live. 
Look at that. Oh, gross. That's the kitchen. Look at the floor. How do they walk on that? Yeah, that's poop. Um, They just, well, they, they're kind of all broken people right now because they've been locked in this house with each other for 36 days. And what happens is um, challenges are thrown at them. They get very little sleep. And you, as the viewer, can dictate what they have to do. No. So you can pay tokens, you buy tokens, and you can pay, if you've got a contestant you don't like, you can take their bed from them. If you pay so enough. So they don't have a bed. If you pay enough. You can, and another thing you can do, I've used up all my tokens so far, I haven't bought any new ones yet. But if I wanted to talk to this guy right now, you see this TTS? Yeah. Click on that. And he'd have to talk I to you. I could type in my message. I, well, I type in a message right here. I've only got 76 tokens right now. It costs 100. But um and it'll it has an automated AI that reads the message out loud into the room. Oh my gosh. So they're constantly barraged so, with people's TTS messages. Constantly. Day and if night. If I had the volume on right now, you would hear this guy's probably being barraged with messages. Like 3 uh, a.m. The these guys are just getting barraged with messages from Nether the Netherlands because they just woke up there. <laughs> Look at this guy dozing off on the couch. Uh, Look, there's flour all over this bed. Why? Uh, they shaved somebody's head here on the floor. Why? Why don't they clean? There's a vacuum the right trashed. there. I see the vacuum. I couldn't. Now, many of you look at the trash on the stairs. I could never. <laughs> I I cannot see a world where I would allow myself. Well, again, now nah, maybe I take that back because if you are living with people who are okay with living in squalor, you would end up setting a precedent where you are just willing to pick up after me. See, painting on the yeah. They met. They said. Carpet. They told him the other night that he has to paint the whole house, and then they gave him acrylic paints from Home Deep from Hobby Lobby. Oh my god! <laughs> what are the What are these people like? Okay, is this round? Have there been people that have come and then they get released from the house? In this, yeah. So I'll show you here in a second the what? the contenders. What are they? Uh, what are they? Yeah, up? this is this guy's name is TJ. Uh, he's one of the, there's only three remaining contenders left and he's having to paint the whole house with acrylic paints and one little one inch brush. Um, so this is the attic. You can see here, this is bedroom one. Bedroom one, has it seen better days? What's As the end game? See, TJ started painting in here the other night. I was watching him and he got tired and went to another room. <laughs> what What's the end game here? What are they? Fifty thousand dollars. That's to the it? winner that that lasts the longest. Yeah. Oh, uh, I, don't, I don't know. If... Here's bedroom two. They used to all had bed for have bed frames, but they have one by one had their bed beds taken. Oh. Uh by by lit by viewers. And you can even go in the bathrooms. You could, there's cameras so like, in the bathrooms, like when they're Yeah, going, this is in a bathroom. Oh, look, they blur this it is out. The master bathroom. Yeah, they just blur out, blur out the toilet and, uh, and the shower. But that doesn't really matter because one of the contestants, Airsoft Fatty, who you probably recognize. Do you know Airsoft Fatty? Is he the one with the mom? The, the old. Yeah, the, it lives in a house full of cats. Yeah, and his and his mom is like she's a meme. Really as well. fat guy. Yeah, yeah. He he's one of the uh, people in the show. Is he? Is um, he in this house He's naked right half now? the time. He usually is. Airsoft Fatty actually isn't a contestant, but he's what they call a um, a uh, freeloader. So, so they he, have people that are staying here that are there for the sole purpose of annoying and pissing off. The contenders. Oh my god! How long does it? How, what's and Airsoft the, Fatty is one of the. What's the runtime? Like, how long do they have to? Is it just until everybody gives up except for one person? It could be years. They're voted off. 
They're voted off. Or they can quit. Okay. They're voted off or they can quit. A lot of times people quit. Um, And it's just fast. Like, here's the kind of things you can buy to fuck with the people. So here's Bed Snatcher. For 6,400 tokens, you can remove a contestant's bed for the night. Oh, my gosh. You can buy a loot crate. You can buy bring a crate of goodies to the contestant of your choice, which is always they appreciate because they have very little food. That they have to scavenge pretty much. How much uh, does a does a token cost? How much are you spending when you buy tokens? Um, I'll show you here in just a second. Okay. So you can have snacks delivered. Here's the screen, which they're sold out right now. And that means you can have one staff a staff member will go and scream at the of the at the contestant of your choice. Oh my gosh. You gotta be kidding me. Cigarette, you can de- deliver them a cigarette. You can make two contestants have a date. Uh, oh, they have to thing. have it in the room of the house. When it comes to like sexy time and stuff, has that happened on the show? Like, do does that has that? I just now started watching. It might have happened in season one. I don't know. Um, I'm sure it probably did. This is like you this, can make. This is like can if make gladiators pretty, uh, and Omegle had a baby. Yeah, exactly. Oh, wow. For 3,000 tokens, you can hit them with, you can hit the contestant of your choice with shut up, which <laughs> means they put a silence bag over your target contestant's head. They cannot see or speak for one hour. <laughs> this is For 8,000 tokens, you can initiate beef where you force two contestants to fight. And that happens a lot. You know what would be really interesting is if they made this show if they broke the show out into multiple cultures where it does, I would say irrespective of the, 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 the attendees in the house, but they give the, they assign control to what happens in the house based on a culture. So the only people that could buy tokens would be like from the Netherlands or the only people that could buy tokens are from Iceland or they're only from, the U S or you could even like say only people from Chicago could buy token. Like, it'd be interesting to see which cultures, like what do they like? What do Japanese people do with their tokens versus, versus like, you know, Portland. (laughs) That'd be wild. There has to be like, I'm, I'm, I'm blown away that this isn't illegal. Yeah, um, it's it's really I mean, it's fascinating to watch, but I mean, they can leave whenever they want. So people that, that are outraged by this, I mean, they're not there, but under they're they're under the, under their own volition. Like, they yeah, yeah, they can leave anytime they want. Yeah. Um, It's wild. I've never seen anything like it. That's amazing. So. Yeah, you have access to any camera in this house with audio. I've just got it turned down. The The audio is really great, too. Like, you can see I'm in a hallway right now. If they were standing down here at the hallway down here talking just under breath, you'd be able to hear every word. Really? Um, and it looks like, like right now they're in between challenges. They're just kind of chilling, waiting for, to be fucked with by the staff. I like that the user um, interface looks very 2003, too. It's like, you know... It looks like something. Yeah, it almost feels that. illegal. This almost feels like snuff. Yeah, it feels like a snuff interface, like something you'd find on Tor, or like you'd find on uh, like this would be the interface uh, to of the camera system on the from the movie The Life Aquatic. <laughs> yeah, you know, this is the UI that they have on the submarine kind of thing. Wow, it's crazy. So this right over here, this lady on this couch, her name is Trish. She was a contestant. She got eliminated last night, actually. Um, And now and they decided that they liked her. So they just made her a a freeloader after they eliminated her. So she went from a contestant last night to a freeloader. She just gets to stay with the house and fuck with the remaining contestants. Do you get get paid as a freeloader? Yes. Okay. Wow, this is wild. This is the confessional booth. Where they can have one on one with the audiences, and uh, and it's actually I'll show you where the, the confessional booth is located underneath this bunk bed. 
under a That's bunk. the door to the confessional. <laughs> so you got to crawl, crawl into the space. It is wow. the wildest thing I've ever found on the internet that's still legal somehow. Here's you know, uh, JT or, or uh, TJ up here still working on painting the floor. Oh my gosh. It makes you think if this is on the internet internet and somebody's figured this out, somebody has to have lifted the concept and there there's probably more than one version of this on the dark web through if you went to tour but you could find dark web versions of this kind of thing oh for sure Oof. now right now the uh staff of the show only have tts turned off which means you can send messages into the room uh but they also have sound effects on occasionally they're turned off right now uh so the staff decide when the stuff is on but uh, the uh, but you also have sound effects. So at when they turn them on, like the other night, Fatty, Airsoft Fatty was asleep on the floor in one of the bedrooms, sounding like he's about to die because he doesn't have a CPAP machine. And somebody hit him with an air raid siren at like three in the morning, and he almost died of a heart attack. Like, <laughs> <What>? <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. This but it's just bananas. wild. I've never seen anything like this it's called Fish Tank TV. Um and it's a a brain it's one of the brain children of of Sam Hyde. And you probably recognize Sam Hyde for a long time it was a running joke on the internet whenever there was a mass shooting. Um they would use Sam Hyde's face. Oh, oh really? I don't it was always this picture. They would be like, and even news stations got tricked into, fakely tricked into putting this as the picture of the shooter. That's fucking Sam oh Hot. Oh my gosh. Oh, jeez. He had a show. I don't remember what it was called, but he had a show for a long time on uh, Adult Swim. So... Um, who, who was the one that did the documentary on Airsoft Fatty? I-dubs. I-dubs. So, and the did same you... guy that tried to do it. This is the picture they used for the, uh, shooter. The, one of these two. Now, uh, did you say but, Sam yeah, I-dubs, did a hit piece? Yeah, I-dubs, after the Airsoft Fatty doc, I-dubs tried to do a doc on Sam Hyde, like a hit piece on him. And Sam Hyde spent thousands upon thousands of dollars can uh, uh making this elaborate fake laugh <laughs> so Adub shows up to do this documentary films the whole documentary and then at the end of it sam's like none of this is real that girl you met i paid her five grand to pretend to be my girlfriend what? i met her like the day before you showed up what that's crazy and he goes you mean she doesn't do drugs <clears throat> and sam's like she does hair so he th he he basically <laughs> poisoned the well so so that he couldn't do a, a a legitimate deep dive on his life. He just threw absolute noise into the mix. None of it was real. He rented an office and put his like the U the headquarters for his YouTube channel in there. Wow. Um, uh, That's he's, amazing. He's just he's some he's something else, man. Oh, I just realized you couldn't even see the photos that I was showing like a fucking jackass. Um, I was looking yeah, them up online, like when you said shooter. So this is the photo they always use as Sam. Uh, this oh, is the shooter. Yeah. Okay, I've seen it. So this is Sam Hyde. Good looking dude. Genius concept. Like genius that he would pull it off, you know? Also, also makes me name, wonder if you're wanting to watch that documentary that we were just talking about that Adubs did on him on YouTube. It's called "Getting Away with It," and, and I would you, highly recommend watching it. It's very interesting. If you haven't seen the documentary that Adubs did on Airsoft Fatty, that's like it'll suck yeah. you in. It's called it, Full Force. Full Force. Oh man, it is like. I, I, you can't explain it. You can't. You can't explain full force. You just have to watch it. Oh. Look at this Sam Hyde pillow you can buy. 
I feel like I get acne just from the pillow. Wow. He's just uh he's a performance artist. He's uh he's an interesting guy, man. Yeah. Um he 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 tricked them into letting him do a TED talk. <laughs> really? This is him doing it. This is him doing a TED talk. <laughs> this is actually from his TED talk. <laughs> he looks like he's part of a Ren Fair. And also a gang member. <laughs> wow. So that's what I wanted to bring today because I found this and it was like, I'd never seen anything like it. Fish Tank Live. Um, it's 60 bucks to sign up for, a, I don't remember, it's like a year or something like that, but it's 24 7 live streaming. It never turns off. I mean, you have access to. To all the cameras, all the audio, everything, twenty four seven. You could send the contestants messages that are actually read to them in on my on speakers in real time. Um, I've never seen anything like this. This guy's fucking hating his life. His name's Oliver. Look at him. Oh, <clears throat> put yourself in there for a second. Like if you were there. Like I'm looking at these guys and they, it, it looks like one of those like college experiments, you know, the, the sociology experiments where they like try to break people. That's what all it is. These, all these people look, look, look like, could you imagine? Okay. Imagine the world they're living in isn't this, but it's like fallout, you know, like war or something. These people wouldn't survive. Like they, they've lost all. And the, I, I guess the other thing is they're surrounded by all the amenities they need. Yeah. But yet look at that guy. Like, and he knows right now they're just waiting for some type of unknown shit to hit the fan. Yeah. The other shooter drop always. Cause it's always something. They're always hitting them with something. Have you ever looked into, have there been notable like money drops, like somebody dropping just a ridiculous amount oh, of yeah. money to do things. Happens all the time. Oh my gosh. What an ingenious idea. Because they'll also vote. So like in real time, you like the staff will put up like, should we make um, airsoft fatty uh, get naked and start tackling the contestants? And then you vote yes or no. And you've got us. Gosh. Ah, so wild. I've never seen anything like it. It's the most you could possibly interact with a show ever. I'm also, what's, what's interesting is that I was on the fence when you first showed it because I'm like, okay, this is a whole website we're going to talk about. But just talking about it is worthy of a podcast. Like, like, yes. The visual helps, but just talking about how crazy this concept is, you know, you don't even need the visuals. But I am disturbed by how many camera angles I keep seeing the vacuum that's in the house and no one's well, using it. Well, the reason it. that's, well, the reason that's there is because you as the viewer can force one of the, if you're sick of looking at a dirty room, yeah, you can pay, that's, that's one of the, uh, that's one of the, they call them fish toys, but like, look here, it's called community service. And for 1200 tokens, you can pick a contestant and they must clean an area of your choice. You know, it'd be fun is you hybridize that one and you make it. So you pick a contestant and you, you pay tokens to have them clean another contestant. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if that's on here. Yeah. Wow. So there's a lot of, of options like as like you could pull the trigger and spend your coins in on what, maybe a hundred different things. Uh, right now. And they change all the time. Right now there's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 21 of the fish toys. Uh, then you got war toys. Which this is a whole different thing that I don't even want to get into talking about clans and stuff in the comment section um, where you can fuck with other. I mean, there's a whole other level of this that I'm not even talking about. Like mirror where universe. Where people that are. 
mildly inconvenient. The, so there are fans, like if you're a fan base of, say, TJ, and they call themselves whatever their clan name is, the TJ people, and then there's people that hate, say, Trish, you can fuck with the people, other listeners. And that's what these toys are for. Wow. So, like, if you got sick of seeing the fans of TJ, right, and you like Trish, you can use this this uh, this toy called Keyboard Fuckery, and everybody that tries to say anything on the Fish Tank website in the comment section or anything, their keyboard is all jacked up. <laughs> oh, also, what's coming to mind now that I think about it, because, like, you showed the Loot Crate, for example— there there has to be there has to be a a number of people that uh are outside of the house that are that are helping to fulfill like if somebody buys a loot crate somewhere nearby there's there's somebody that's like oh okay okay I'll talk to you guys later I got to go put together a loot crate somebody bought a loot crate like there's people that are they're like zookeepers <laughs> People that are what? They're like zookeepers. They're the people that, like, if you buy a loot crate, somebody's got to put the loot crate together and take it to the house. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. It's oh. like you're trying, and also, like, sometimes the the the, the viewers will know what's coming, uh -huh. like a, a highly, uh, something that's going to take a lot of caloric expenditure. So you've got your contestant that you're cheering for. It's like, oh, they're getting ready to do something that's going to be like five hours long. It's going to take a lot of energy. Yeah. Like they're going to have to take part in a five-hour dance party. Oh, my God. Right. And you're like, I want my contestant to have energy. They have very little food. I'll send them a loot crate. And you can have them carb up before the big, like, you even decide when they eat. When they have, like. <laughs> oh, my gosh. So this these is, are the two big ticket things. So this in 10,000, you can go to the uh, fish tank house and have a, a candlelit dinner date with the contestant of your choice. What? Really? And then he, here's the fish B&B. Yeah. For 25,000. You can go and spend a day at the at the fish fish tank house and be a um you're a freeloader. Wow. Okay, so I still haven't have you already said how much a token costs? Like how much a Oh no, I haven't said yet. So Yeah, like if you wanted to so be So when you sign up, so you can see here the prices. Yeah, oh, okay. But when you sign up, you get I think it was like seven hundred tokens. Okay. So you get those for free when you sign up. Oh, wow. Um, and then this is how much, how much did you say being a freeloader for a day was like 65,000 or something? 25,000. 25,000. So if 6,400 tokens is $500, you, you, you would have to, you'd have to spend, you'd have to spend over $1,500 to, to Wait, show no. up and be a freeloader for the day. This is genius. No way. Five grand? Wait. Well, $6,400. No $2,500. No yeah, way. Wow. 13, well, So, yeah, two grand. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're over 15. Yeah, some, yeah, right. Crazy. Wow. I just can't imagine doing, like, what we do all day long to, to earn money, to turn around and spend... Spend it on this. <laughs> like, I'd much rather well, go in and just like. I may have. <laughs> I'd much rather go in and tell my kids to do something for free. <laughs> Tommy Toe Tags. I just like watching it. Are you I, Tommy Toe Tags? The only thing I spent money on is sending. Me yeah. Okay. <laughs> I just I I have it on, and I I enjoy watching it. The only thing I've spent money on is sending messages. I really like trying to get them to laugh. Uh, the first couple of days that I was watching this, and I did, and it was very satisfying. Especially airsoft fatty, I like getting him to laugh because he bounces. 
So I would send these really ridiculous messages to him out through the house and he'd laugh or give me a gun, gun fingers at the camera and wink. Uh, uh, gross. It was just, this is unbelievable. I've never seen anything like it, man. That's what I wanted to talk about today. It was fish tank, fish tank live. It's called, it's got a really easy user interface here. Yeah. Um, it's just really, it'll, it'll waste your time if you get caught up in it. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Like one of the competitions they had the other night, like if you're wondering why this is like this, was uh, they they had two teams of two people. There's only four contestants left. Um, and they had to barricade their the door in a room and try to stop Air South Fatty from getting in. Oh and, gosh. you know, he's fucking 600 pounds, five foot six. So he's just running at the doors from down the hallway and busting through. And that's why these rooms are trashed. Um, well, a lot of this was trashed before he even did that. But yeah, I was going to say probably sixes on how trashed it was before. Wow. OK, so Airsoft Fatty is close by. So I wonder where this place is. This actually, this house is actually in Rhode Island. Rhode Island. Crazy. What's crazy to think about is I wouldn't, and this is just a conspiracy theory, but I wouldn't be surprised if there were Epstein Island type of places with this kind of a website. You know, like this is Probably. this is free public viewing you can pay some money and do this i mean the depraved in the world have to have thought you know this is a good idea and it makes some money let's put you know let's put one together that's crazy well they're on season two now and there's going to be a season three because apparently it's getting really popular and i can understand why have you seen there's a it's from the dark web but have you seen the video? I think, oh, maybe I sent it to you. Video of the guy with the webcam. It's, this is, was a video. This was on the, I didn't, I wasn't on the live feed, but there was a video from a guy's webcam and he, he quarters and quarters and, uh, and debone, remove, removes all the meat from a human in that basement. It's kind of dark, but he like, strings them up in you know in the distance you can see the guy he gets kind of they he puts him upside down and then he goes through the process of just field dressing i haven't do you get Oof. to spend tokens that's the thing i don't know is is i don't know if there was a user interface around the video <laughs> but but yeah that guy had a webcam and he in it was legit. He he killed he he, uh, he took a dead person. I don't know if they were dead already. But he took a dead person and he field he quartered him, and like processed all the parts of this guy. It was crazy. Makes my stomach sick. Well, I look forward to seeing you on Fish Tank, op. Yeah, because I know you'll be there now. Show. Not on the show, but on the website. Dude, you said it was $60 Some of the things they do is like legitimately, they, they, they like, I don't know how it's legal. Um, They cut a girl's bald, like that bald. Yeah, I saw a bald Human girl. that you saw walking around was a, was a female who had a full head of hair just three days ago. <laughs> That's so, crazy. Teresa in the back door says... You and Kent should fishbowl the next meetup. Just two dudes sharing a hotel room. That would be room. fun. CPAPs on full blast. <laughs> <laughs> we could live. <clears throat> you, I mean, you and I are pretty. We're pretty sedate in a in a hotel room. We could live. Yeah, stream we the are hotel very room. chill until it's you know. Not, it's. I think. I think I'd probably. I think we'd want to turn it off for bedtime because of uh, one of us has. PTSD and it <laughs> there's no amount of tokens to cover those experiences. <laughs> We'd turn it off at night for sure. Yeah, how fun would it be to play the air siren, air raid siren, <laughs> um 
<laughs> you end up breaking my and neck. Dude, that thing is loud when they play it. Oh, deafening. It's got to be expensive. Like, to play, to be honest, I mean, surprisingly, making the sound effects and speaking out in the room that they're in is surprisingly cheap. Uh, yeah, I um, guess it's, it's not expensive. Yeah, I guess in order to um, that makes sense. A lot of the live streamers that I've seen, where you you pay money and suddenly the speaker just says something, those things are lower priced because then it triggers people to to do it all the time. And before you know it, it's like the Candy Crush kind of uh, you know process. It's oh, it's a dollar ninety nine for more you know coins. It's a yeah. dollar ninety nine. It's not. But before you know it, in a week you've spent. Thirteen ninety nine. Where if it were thirteen ninety nine to do it once, you'd be like, "That's stupid." But you'll do it at one ninety nine five times, you know, six times. Uh, the the interesting, and that's another thing that I would imagine is more is mentally draining if you're one of the contestants is being barked at twenty four seven by people because some of it's very mean. Yeah, like I don't like I don't do the mean stuff. Uh, but some of it is like really mean. It seems like that um, those sound torture studies that they've done noise torture. That's exactly what it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh boy. Just two dudes sharing. I just I had to show that because I found that and I was blown away. I'd never seen anything like it. That's amazing. That and a bold move too, because again, podcast and we talked about a website that you're watching, but uh, it. Airsoft Fatty walked around completely naked. I'm talking head to toe, completely naked for six hours, and nobody ever saw his dick. That is 100% true. They were making fun of him because he was standing there naked in front of them, and you're look, they don't blur it out. If there's nudity that happens outside of the toilet or the shower, they don't blur it out. It's, I mean, they can't. It's live. And you know it's live right. because when what you send mean? the message, when you try to say, like, when I was trying to make Airsoft Fatty laugh in the rooms, like if I if I hit enter, it would literally play the message like three to four seconds later. So um, really? that's how you know they don't have time to edit it if something happens. But Airsoft is so fast. Can other people? That is. I'm sorry. No, go go ahead. Sorry, what are you saying I, I, we've got a little bit of a lag, so I I, I cut you off. Sorry. Well, he's just so fat that he was naked for six hours and nobody saw his dick. And they were making fun of him because they were like, you know, one of the, they were sitting there on the couch talking the other night and they were like, you know, it's crazy. Chris has been naked for like half the time we've been here and I've never saw his penis. Never saw his penis. <laughs> he, now, so Chris is we should, for, fatty. for people that don't know, Air, Airsoft Fatty is, He's not old. He's in his twenties, I think. But he's yeah. he's the kind of he 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 ha, he takes no good care of himself. Eats and drinks a ridiculous amount of sugar. He's he's the kind of fat where the human body doesn't know where else to put it, so it starts putting it in your forehead. That's how fat he is. Like it's it's like I don't know where else to store it, so it started storing it behind his earlobes. You may, people may wreck it. Here's, here's Airsoft Fatty for those that are back door right now. If you've ever people seen may the recognize old lady, him. you know the old lady on the porch that's like, what? That, that meme, the what meme, the old lady, that's his yeah. grandma, right? I don't know yeah, if man. it's his grandma. I know that what got him famous was a viral video whenever he was like 17 or 18 uh, it was called Fat Star Wars Kid. Yeah. Where he's having a lightsaber duel in his front yard with shirtless and he trips over a garbage can. If you feel like life sucks, if you feel like wanting to do something bad to yourself, go watch Full Force, the documentary about Airsoft Fatty, and you will walk away going, you know what? Life is pretty darn good. Yeah. My favorite part of Full Force is because they're basically just doing doing a documentary about this random, really fat kid. And I keep calling him fat, but he's got a good sense of humor about it. He, like, knows that he's fat. Uh, he jokes about it himself all the time. But, 
like this fat kid living the most like inbred backwoods life in this rundown house with 50 fucking cats and his mom on disability and I dubs goes back into the into into one of the rooms and it's just covered in cat shit and litter boxes and airsoft is like oh I am so embarrassed right now uh mother was supposed to clean this up and it doesn't usually look like this <laughs> and like you could tell that it totally looks like some of that shit had been there for like five years. Yeah. Like there's the camera would cut every once in a while to just like something unbelievable in the house. Like it would cut to the ceiling tiles and they, and they would, it was like they, te- they had like spaghetti product testing on the ceiling tile. Like you can't imagine that. And then there's like a whole video where a whole part of the documentary where they show up and then, Airsoft Fatty's just out driving his car, doing cookies in the in the field. You said car, yeah, it's not, a but it's a late nineties minivan. Yeah, he's just out there ripping around the field. It like I can't <laughs> recommend it enough because like I I now I'm a firm believer in in things in things like better help. I'm also a firm believer that sometimes you can watch a documentary that makes you feel better about yourself. And that's full force. So just to plug everything that we've talked about, the website is Fish Tank Live. Uh, they also have a free version where you don't have to pay. You just can't interact or anything, you know. Uh, so you don't have to pay anything if you don't want to. And you just want to watch the show. It's free. You can click. You can still go through around the house, listen, everybody, watch everything live in real time. You just can't do any of the interactions or anything. But, so that's called Fish Tank Live. And then the documentaries are on YouTube, both of them. The documentary on Sam Hyde, the creator of Fish Tank, is called Getting Away With It. Um, and it's by iDubs. And the second documentary about Airsoft Fatty is called Full Force, also by iDubs. Yeah. All right. Well, that was disturbing. Yeah. Uh, I thought my airline stuff was going to be like the wild ride for this episode, but turns out that that terrible house is the one. Well, if you I like, just like, had to share that because I came across it by accident the other night and I was looking for porn and um, it, <laughs> what I, it shocked what, me to my core. What I need to know is... In the timeline of you finding that website, how how long did it take you to pull out your debit card? Probably about six minutes. <laughs> That's it's genius. I'll they were doing it. uh. They were doing a game the other day. None of them had slept or eaten, and they made them play Marco Polo forever. But Airsoft Fatty was po- Polo, and they put him in this beat in one of those beat up ass busted rooms, blindfolded Airsoft Fatty, and then turned off all the lights. And the cameras are all night vision too, so if they turn off the lights, they go into night vision mode, so you're never in the dark. And wow. then uh, they made him play Marco Polo, where Airsoft Fatty was the one trying to catch him and eliminate him. And he was so bad at at finding them. And I didn't know he was deaf in his left ear, so I typed in one of the messages I sent was, Airsoft Fatty, or Chris, I always say Chris in the messages because Airsoft Fatty feels mean. But I was like, Chris has the spatial awareness and the senses of Helen Keller. And he stopped. He was playing Marco Polo. He stopped. One of the contestants started laughing. And you can hear, and he, I seen him turning his head trying to hear where it was coming from. But it was Trisha. But he stopped and he like turned his head towards the camera. He's got a blindfold and he goes, That's not funny, motherfucker. I'm deaf in my left ear. Oh my gosh. And- <laughs> oh gosh. Marco said, What porn were you searching for that put you there? And the what my keyword for the porn that I was trying to jerk off to, I topped in airsoft fatty. <laughs> I knew it. So, oh man, this is disturbing. All right, well we've we have definitely over informed uh, the listeners on on several rabbit holes today. Many of them 
don't have litter boxes at the bottom of the hole. So, in do, you know, enter at your own risk. But on that note, I think we'll we'll go ahead and we'll leave you, and we'll be back tomorrow. We. I do want to give a heads up real quick. If you go to Fish Tank Live, go at your own discretion because Sam Hyde is a huge person for freedom of speech and everything, and you're going to get pieces of shit of society when you do anything like that, as we're learning with Twitter. I'm in support of it, but there are going to be repercussions for that. And because of that, you're going to see a lot of racist shit in the comment section and homophobic shit in the comment section. So... That's unfortunate. There's always going to be some bad apples, though. A lot of the people are cool. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, I guess. Crazy. So, bye. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Hugs, everybody. Bye.